Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Victoria Physics. In this video, I'm going to discuss about optics. So optics is that branch of physics which deals with the study of light. And it is divided into three fields. The geometrical optics, which is treated by the method of light rays and phenomena like reflection, refraction of light are explained. It is divided into another main section, which is the physical optics, which is concerned with the nature of light and it involves the classical wave theory of light. We also have the quantum optics, which requires the use of quantum mechanics, where light is assumed to follow the particle characteristics moving in the form of a wave. For the time being, we will just confine our studies to physical optics where light is assumed to have wave motion and all this physical phenomena that is interference and diffraction and polarization are explained. So let us begin our study on the nature of light. Light has two different natures. Sometimes it behaves like a particle, sometimes it behaves like a wave. That is, it exhibits a dual nature. To explain various theories about the nature of light have been proposed from time to time. And some of the main theories includes the corpuscular theory of light. Newton proposed that light source emits tiny particles called the corpuscles. And these particles are of negligible mass. Hence, they are not affected by gravitational force and travels in a straight line away from the luminous objects with a very high speed. This theory successfully explains the rectilinear propagation of light and it also explains reflection and refraction of light but this theory fails to explain the phenomena like interference, diffraction and polarization. Moving on to the next very important theory is the wave theory of light. Christian Huygens proposed the wave theory of light and according to his theory light from a luminous source travels in the form of longitudinal waves, just like sound waves in air, and with a uniform velocity and also in a homogeneous medium in a straight line. He even assumed the existence of a hypothetical medium, that is an imaginary elastic medium called the luminiferous ether. And according to him, ether particles are present everywhere, even in the so-called vacuum, and possesses properties like uh, inertia, zero density, and perfect transparency. So on the basis of his wave theory, various colors of light are due to different wavelengths of light waves. And when light waves enter our eyes, we get the sensation of light. So on the basis of his theory, we can correctly predict the dependence of velocity of light on a medium and the optical phenomena such as reflection, refraction, interference and diffraction and polarization are explained. The next very important theory is the electromagnetic nature of light. James Clerk Maxwell suggested that light propagates as a traveling wave of electric and magnetic fields and such waves are called the electromagnetic waves. These waves are transverse in nature and requires no medium for their propagation. 
Moving on to the most important theory is the quantum theory of light. Max Planck, a German physicist, proposed this theory to explain black body radiations. And according to his theory, light is propagated in the form of small packets of energy called the quanta or photon. And each quanta or photon has energy which is given by this expression equal to h mu, where mu is the frequency of the photon and h is constant, called the Planck's constant. So we find that light has a dual nature and it can behave as a particle as well as like a wave and all this phenomena, that is the interference, the diffraction, polarization, can be explained with the concept of waves. Moving on to our next important topic that is the electromagnetic waves. We have a very beautiful picture over here that will explain you about uh, electromagnetic waves. It is a three-dimensional view of an EM wave showing the electric and magnetic fields and light is an electromagnetic wave which is an alternating oscillation of the electric and the magnetic fields. Thus a beam of light is a traveling wave of electric and magnetic fields and the electromagnetic waves are produced by moving electric charges. As you can see in this figure, the electric field is in the vertical plane, that is the XY plane, and the magnetic field is in the horizontal plane, that is the XZ plane. The magnetic field varies sinusoidally in the XZ plane. That induces a perpendicular electric field, which also varies sinusoidally in the XY plane. Since this electric field is varying sinusoidally, which induces a perpendicular magnetic field, that also again varies sinusoidally. And this process continues and two fields continuously create each other via induction, resulting in a magnetic, sorry, in an electromagnetic wave in the X direction. So we see that the electric field vectors and the magnetic field vectors are perpendicular to each other and they are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the EM wave. This uh, gives us a very beautiful relationship uh, between the wavelength and the frequency and the speed of a wave. I guess you all know what is a wavelength. Uh, still, I say a bit of it as that a wavelength of an EM wave is the distance between two successive peaks or valleys of the waveform. And the frequency is actually the number of such waves passing through a given point per unit time. So the relationship that follows between the frequency, the wavelength, and the speed is given by this very expression where f is given by omega by 2 pi as you all know omega is the angular frequency so we see here that the speed of a periodic wave is actually the product of wavelength and frequency another relationship is derived from this very concept and that is the speed of electromagnetic light or wave in vacuum. That is given by this very relationship. That is C is equal to E by P, and which is equal to one by mu naught into epsilon naught, root over one by mu naught into epsilon naught. And if we substitute the value of mu naught and epsilon naught, which is actually the permeability and the permittivity respectively in vacuum, we finally derive the value of C to be as the speed of light that is equivalent to three into 10 to the power eight meter per second. I hope this is quite clear to you. So, let us understand about 
electromagnetic spectrum. Well, what is electromagnetic spectrum? Just we had some concept about electromagnetic waves. So it is actually the orderly distribution of electromagnetic waves with respect to their wavelength is called the electromagnetic spectrum. And the picture of an electromagnetic spectrum is somewhat of this nature. You can see the distribution of various electromagnetic waves with respect to increasing wavelength and frequency. And this particular region is the visible spectrum or the visible light region. This gives you the rainbow of colors designated as the virtue, and it represents a very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. As you can see, uh, the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum lies within a narrow frequency band from around say 384 to 769 terahertz and wavelength ranges from around say 780 to 400 nanometers. On the short wavelength side of the visible region is the ultraviolet uh, light wavelengths that ranges from the from around say 10 to 400 nanometers and this ultraviolet uh, light is extensively used in scientific instruments to study properties of chemical and biological systems. It is also important in astronomical observations. We also have um, uh, the x-rays over here. Um, these are actually the electromagnetic radiations having frequency just above or the wavelength just below the ultraviolet and the high penetration depths of x-rays makes them useful in medical investigations and as a therapeutic or surgical tool recently with the use of x-rays uh, x-ray telescope x-ray microscope and interferometers are developed for imaging the variety of objects. We also uh, have some idea that uh, they have so much of energy and such a short wavelength that they can go right through you. Well, um, on this side, we have uh, the radio waves. They have the longest wavelengths, but they are least energetic and uh, they are used in antennas. They find application in telephone and televisions and mobiles and wireless networkings. They are used actually for transmission of data via modulation. We have microwaves. Uh, these are very, very easily absorbed by water and they are good for transmitting information because microwave energy can penetrate haze, light, rain, and snow, clouds, anything. They are used in mobile phones, in fixed traffic speed cameras, in radars, which is used by aircraft, in ships and weather forecasts. Uh, I guess most of the things I discussed, we are, oh, we are left with uh, infrared radiation. So, Infrared can be detected by special infrared films and uh, the primary source of infrared radiation is the heat or thermal radiation. Our skin emits infrared light, which is why we can see, we can be seen in dark by someone using night vision clockers. They are find application in remote controls. So I guess you got a your picture about this uh, electromagnetic spectrum and this uh, will give you a very clear idea as to remember where and which portion of the electromagnetic spectrum finds application in which field and the frequency nature and the wavelength and the speed of this is also mentioned over here. So 
finally thank you all did you like this video then give it a sh like share and subscribe to my channel stay at home and stay safe thank you